silver and gold. Heaven of us, such as I give unto thee. Right then the Spirit touched him, and he bleed to his feet, saying, Look what God's done for me. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He say He's just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He say it's just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. I was bound by chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope or peace of mind. And though my sins were red as scarlet, He washed them white as snow, and He opened my blinded eyes. Now my soul will rejoice since I made him my choice. I've got love, peace, and everything within. You see, my name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. Can't you see what God's done for me? Well, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Oh, come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Let's worship Him tonight. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, he, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. It was just in time. I'm going to praise His name. He saved me just the same. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for what the Lord has done? Amen. Let's welcome him into his house tonight. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege and the presence, Lord, that we feel in this place tonight. Thank you for the anointing of God that was with us all day today. Thank you for bringing us to a Tuesday night service. And Lord, we do give you praise and honor and glory for everything that you have done. But Lord, we're expecting you to move in this place tonight. Lord, we've come hungry to hear from your word. We've come hungry, Lord, to give you our praise so that you may pour out your power and your anointing upon your people uh, and Lord just help us tonight uh, in a special way uh, and we'll give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory for it in the name of Jesus we pray and, and everybody said amen and, and amen remain standing let's worship together tonight Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand, and I want to be standing on your side. 
holding your hand so let your kingdom come let it live in me this is my prayer this is my plea father i see that you are drawing a line in the sand and i want to be standing on your side holding your hand so let your kingdom come let it live in me this is my prayer this is my plea let the worshipers arise let the sons and the daughters sing i surrender in my home i surrender to the king so let the worshipers arise let the sons and the daughters sing i surrender in my home i surrender to the king father i hear it growing louder the song of your redeemed as the saints of every nation are awakening to sing and from our heart there comes an anthem oh hear the heavens ring this is our song a song to our king let the worshipers arise hallelujah let the sons and the daughters sing i surrender in my home i surrender to the king so let the worshipers arise let the sons and daughters sing i surrender in my home i surrender to Cost to see my 
my sin upon the cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am. To say that you're my God, oh, you are all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my. Just to see my sin upon that cross, oh, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Hallelujah. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. You're my God, and you're all together lovely, you're all together worthy, you're all together wonderful to me. Oh, can you say amen for that tonight? Amen. Here we are tonight, on a Tuesday night, to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in His presence tonight. What a joy it is to have you with us in the house of the Lord tonight. And trust that you have come with one purpose, and that is to worship the God who is above every other name. Amen. The name that is greater than any other name on this side of heaven. We welcome you to our Tuesday night service. And uh, didn't the man of God preach to us last night? And I have been encouraged and strengthened. And uh, if you didn't know what you were doing or why you were doing it or how it was going to work out, uh, you know after last night. And if you weren't here... Now go back and watch it. I believe the Lord will talk to you even on a video. Amen? Because the man of God preached to us last night. He told me, he told me today, he told on himself, he said, I thought, I mean, I thought he was, I like it, wound up tight. Can you say amen? And uh, he wound up tight last night. He said, I was a little tired last night. Just had a long, you know, long weekend. I was a little tired. I slept, I think, dear God, and man, if that, if that was a little bit tired, I'm ready for tonight then. Hallelujah. So uh, you better listen fast. He might be preaching fast tonight. Amen? And uh, so glad to have Brother Jerry Daniel with us. Had a wonderful short lunch with him today. Um, we had uh, just some things that come up to deal with. And, and But one of the things we dealt with today was scheduled. We knew it was going to be the Tuesday revival, just the way it worked. Um, but I am pleased to announce that Pastor Dustin and Pastor Ricky both passed their commercial driver's license road test today. And uh, they are done. And all they got to do now is go turn all that into the DMV and get a real license, amen? And they won't need pastor to ride on the bus with them anymore. And uh, they have been practicing and studying. And, and uh, if you don't know that process, it's a three-step process for the test. It's a, a pre-trip inspection, a skills test, and then a road test. It's a two-hour process. And, uh, and, they, and when you do the pre-trip, they have you all up under, I mean, you're under the bus. I mean, you're looking at spring leaves and illegal welds and... And, and budded rims and all kind of stuff, okay? Stuff that I don't even know. Please don't make me take one of those again. Uh, I don't even know all that stuff. But um, they have been practicing hard. And uh, so we're excited about that. And that was part of the agreement. We bought the bus. 
Uh, I said, look, guys, you have got to get your license. Pastor can't drive all the time and go all the places and do it. If we're going to buy it, we're going to use it. Can you say amen? And uh, we've already put 1,900 miles on that bus in two months. I said, let's add some more to it. Amen? And uh, now we got some drivers. They can help. So we're excited about that. And I uh, wanted to mention that to you tonight. That was a big thing on our calendar and on the schedule we want to get done. And also, uh, it's not really our Wednesday night service. I'll mention this maybe tomorrow night. But uh, our pecans, or pecans, depending on how you, what you say they are, uh, they arrived today. And some of you have been asking, and 20, 24 pounds per box and 12 boxes, 12 cases of them showed up today. And uh, Ricky and Dustin and I wouldn't hear. Thanks, Coach Rob, for unloading all of them. And, um, and I heard the driver was just so helpful when he got here. And uh, so thanks for doing that. But they're a, a $9 a pound. Is that correct, Pastor? Uh, he has went from being uh, the bus man to the nut man now. And so uh, I don't know if he has his bags with him tonight or not. But if he don't, starting tomorrow night, he'll have his, his pecan bag with him. And uh, you can go and get some of you been asking. And they're here. Please just buy them all early, amen? And uh, let's take care of that, and uh, it's a great thing. Grace Worship Center did that, and we brought that over to Ocoee uh, when they merged in with us a few years ago, and it's been a fun time. So if you're going to be doing any baking, you might as well just go ahead and buy them now. That way you've got them. And uh, we, we, I say we, you bought some from a pound, same brand, from Publix. Am I right, Miss Wendy? A pound from Publix. Uh, three or four or five weeks ago, we didn't pay $9 a pound for them. You pay like 12 or $13 a pound for them. And so uh, it's cheaper if you buy them from the church. Amen. So it's a fundraiser for our, our church. So see Pastor Ricky. He can help you with that. And I'm just glad to be alive on Tuesday night. Amen. Glad that Jesus is on the throne. Feel the joy of the Lord in my heart. Feel the liberty to worship. Just feel like I've been, I'm among family. And I'm thankful for that tonight. It is good to have Brother Dave and Sister Rhonda. They slid in back there and good to see them. It's been a little while. Good to see you guys. Brother Eric is back tonight. And then another good round of home folks all back with us tonight. And I'm thankful for that. Are you glad you're on your way to heaven? I am. Amen. If Jesus doesn't come and rapture us out of here between tonight and tomorrow night, I'll be back right here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Hopefully you'll be with us. Don't forget, Wednesday night we do have dinner. And so at 6 o'clock to 6.45, they'll have dinner in the fellowship hall. I think it's meatloaf this week. Check your bulletin. Check the screens. They'll have all that for you. Uh, but we will have that. We do that on Revival Week as well. And so they'll have that for you beginning at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. 7 o'clock church. I'm ask the ushers if they would come and get ready to wait upon you. Let's give a good offering tonight. Thank you for how you responded already last night. And uh, just trusting that you'll respond again tonight. Remember for our home church, we ask that if you're able, every giving family, every family unit, help us out with uh, an extra $25 revival offering. Just help cover the expenses. We're going to take care of the man of God this week. And we had a great lunch today. While we were at lunch, while I'm on lunch, uh, let me mention, we took a special guest with us to lunch today. Uh, we took Mariah because today is Mariah's birthday. She turns 12. Amen. And um, when I booked Revival, I didn't think about it being Mariah's birth week or birthday. And, uh, but that should not surprise her. 12 years ago, uh, her birthday was on a Monday. And uh, she was born on a Monday at 11.14 in the morning. And uh, it was revival week that week right here at this church. Uh, Papa Hanks was in revival that week here at Ocoee. And I'll never forget it. Wendy played the piano Sunday morning. Wendy played the piano Sunday night. During the two services, we went home and set up a nursery. We had to have some remodel work done to make room for this new arrival. And they laid the carpet in that addition and that remodel on Saturday evening. We churched it Sunday morning. We set up nursery Sunday afternoon. We came to church Sunday night. And then we were at Arnold Palmer Hospital at 5 a.m. Monday morning. And at 11.14, Mariah was in the world. And so uh, Miss Wendy took a few nights off of the piano and stayed home for a few days. I was back in church on Tuesday night and, uh, and finished out revival here. And then, um, and then that Sunday, Miss Wendy was back in church. We're debating whether you were on the piano. We think you took a Sunday off. And then was back on the piano. But, uh, so Mariah's been born right in the middle of revival. So, honey, just, I guess we're just going to have revival every year. And we've done this more than one time. Has revival been scheduled during her birthday? So um, happy birthday to her. And uh, she is officially part of the youth group. I'm so glad she's yours. And, um, and uh, please try to keep her on the right track. And, and uh, after 12 years, she leaves Children's Church and uh, moves into the youth group. And uh, we're thankful for that tonight. So let's give a good offer. And I said that because 
giving you time to get your money out. But she went to lunch with us today, and we had a great lunch. And I took Ricky and Dustin with me since they passed their bus test, and uh, I didn't let them eat all the way over there. We, had to, we left here at 6.40 this morning and got finished at noon, and, I, and you would think you would just go eat lunch. I said, uh-uh. We got to get back. The preacher's waiting on me. We got to eat with the preacher. So if you're going to eat, you got to just wait to get to Okoe. And if you'll wait, I'll buy. So it was 1 2 o'clock before we had lunch today. And so they probably thought they were going to die. But uh, they, they made it. And uh, preacher was very patient with us. Told him I'd make that up tomorrow. And we would, we would make that up. But uh, let's give a good offering tonight. Father, we love you. Thank you for the privilege we have to be a part of the family of God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have to give of our offerings. Just pray that you'll take it, multiply it for the intended use. Touch, Lord, every offering this week and let it go to the ministry, Lord, that's before us. And we'll forever be thankful for what you're going to do with it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Amen. Thank you for your giving to the Lord tonight. I'm glad a little talk with Jesus still makes it right. Amen. I will confess to you that I uh, prayed for these guys that were testing before today. But today, I drove this morning where they could study. And uh, I prayed for them. I, not out loud, just in, in my spirit. I prayed all the way to Winter Haven this morning. Dear God, please let these guys pass today. And uh, I had to sit there for four hours because it's two hours and two hours. And I just sat in the break room they had there and... Uh, and uh, sat there for four hours while they're taking their individual test and, and, uh, and prayed for them. I said, Lord, we really need them to get this done today. And, and I think they were a little nervous about it. I, I heard one was stressed out and I heard one didn't sleep last night. Things of that nature. I, I slept great last night. Amen. And uh, so I, I'm glad they were able to do that. Thanks for being with us tonight. And uh, we've been delighted to have Brother Jerry with us. And uh, um, just a few moments, the youth choir's coming. And after they finish, he's going to come back and take this pulpit and... Let me just encourage you to open your heart to receive from the Lord tonight. And so uh, the little bit of time we were together today, we just talked about ministry and, and you know, how they got to where they're at and how God's blessing them. And, uh, and uh, they're in a, somewhat of a similar situation. They're landlocked where they're at and, and uh, they've had some challenges with buildings and need God to open up some land and where they can absorb some property around them to, to make more parking or either move or relocate and... And, uh, and I, I can tell you, if God can do it for Okoe, God can do it for Garden City. Amen. He about gave us the land behind us. And we know that and we're thankful for that. And I just pray that you'll pray with him. And I appreciate him coming and leaving his wife and his boys. And uh, him and Brother Roger, I think, were showing pictures last night of uh, kids and grandkids. And so maybe, maybe if you'll send those to me, man, maybe we'll let you show the whole church tomorrow night, those boys. 17... 9 and 11, 17, 11, and 9. So, oh, man, to have a house full of boys. Thank God I only have one. So, and, uh, but we're delighted that he is with us. And thank you for coming and loving on us and being with us. And, and hopefully uh, when you leave here, you'll say it's been good to be at Okoy. Amen? Amen. All right, youth choir, come on up at this time. And uh, let's let them uh, worship with us as they lead us again into the throne room of the Lord. And uh, proud of these young people, proud of what God's doing in their life. 
proud of the way they get in the altars. Amen. They don't linger back and, and watch everybody pray, but they'll move to this platform and they will pray. And I'm thankful for that. Let's worship with them. And then after they get done, our brother Jerry is going to come and take this pulpit. And let's just get right in. And let's, let's amen him and let's sing with him and uh, let's hallelujah him and let's see what God has for us tonight. No hope, cause a drunkard to quit drinking, set an addict free from dope. He can make something from nothing, 
because he did it just for me. Tell me who but God can do such things as these. Well, tell me who but God can do such things as these. Who but God can do such things as these. Who can calm the stormy waters when he speaks to demons Tell me who but God can do such things as these. Well, tell me who but God can do such things as these. Who but God can do such things as these? He may pump the stormy waters when he speaks to demons. Who but God can do such things as these? Praise the Lord. Tell me who but God can do such things as these. Amen. I'd like my life to be labeled. Amen. When I look back at the end of the road and I think to myself, how in the world did I get here? Amen. I can look back and say, hey, it wasn't but Him that got me here. Amen. What a testimony that we can look at the end of the road of this life. Amen. And say, you know what? If it wasn't for Him. Amen. If it wasn't for Him, I would not be where I am today. I would love every step, every mark of my life to be marked by the testimony. Amen. That God did it. God said it. God made it happen. Amen. Who but God can do such things as these? None but God. Man, I want to say thank you one more time. Amen. To everyone here. To the great hospitality. The ones I've I, I come here. I don't know anybody really. Um, I've, I've shook your pastor's hands maybe two or three times before. Coming here this, this week, the only ones I knew was Brother Dustin and Sister Holly. I met them about five years ago teaching an adult class at a vacation Bible school. And uh, besides seeing you youth at PYFC, um, I didn't know anybody. And y'all have welcomed me like family and friend, and I just appreciate that so much. Amen. I, I love the hospitality y'all have here. and that To me, that's a testament to y'all's pastor and the love he has. Now, there's one thing I noticed last night, yesterday, um, is y'all love y'all's pastor. Amen. And that's a mark of the man of God and the love he has for his church. I've, I've been to churches and places, amen, where, where that congregation didn't love that pastor because that pastor didn't love that church. Amen. But you can always tell when you get there when that congregation loves that church, you know it's because that pastor loves that church. Amen. And I just appreciate that, what I see and what I feel. Amen. Praise the Lord. God blessed us last night, didn't He, church? Amen. Man, He blessed me last night. Touched me. Amen. And I'm looking forward to what He has in store in this house tonight. I believe He's got a word for us. I'm expecting God to touch and move. Amen. I'm just going to continue pressing on in 1 Peter chapter 1. Amen. First all week long, Lord willing. Amen. I'll just dig on through this. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. Amen. And I'm going to minister in verse 3 tonight. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Amen. I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and read, starting in verse 1, in verse 3. That way I can lay a foundation. Verse 1, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. Amen. The text that I minister from tonight in verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten, begotten, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Pastor, if you would bless this word for us.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 3. I'm going to read it one more time. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again, begotten us, rebirthed us, unto a lively hope, a living hope. Man, you find 1 Peter chapter 2, amen. It tells us that He was a living stone, and we are that lively hope. Stone. So he's rebirthed us, begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. To lay a brief foundation, I go back through, amen, some of what I ministered yesterday. We find that he's writing this letter and he's talking to those. And if it's all right, I will lay this and repeat a little bit. Amen. You know, study shows if you repeat something seven times, you have a better chance of memorizing it. Amen. This is just the way I preach at my church, amen. I am a part one, part two, part ten preacher, amen. Sometimes I get hung up on the same verse four or five times. I heard one man say uh, Wednesday night, he said, amen, you got done with part three. When you said part four, I, said, I thought to myself, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be a long one tonight, amen. I am that just that kind of guy, uh, and, and, and some of it is the way God has blessed our church, amen. We have went from 12 to... 140, 150, amen, if we, if, if we had everybody there at one time, if we could park everybody at one time, we'd have about 180, 200, amen, but we have a lot, um, even though you, you, and you always find this, some have come from other churches, we have a lot of new converts, amen, that have come in, first saved, a some that have come from the Baptist faith, knew nothing about Pentecost, and this is just the way God has laid it on my heart, amen. I've, I grew up in, in church all my life, and it was my pastor, my uncle, he never preached from the same verse in my entire life. I, I don't know how in the world he did it, pastor, but he never preached from the same verse my entire life. But the problem with that was, in my own mind frame, was I missed so much. Amen, so I, why not just take time to slow down a little bit and dig in that word? And just let's understand what it means, amen. That way when we leave this revival, when we look back at 1 Peter chapter 1 again, we're going to know exactly what God has to say in it, amen, and God has to say for us. Amen, so you, what you find in that first verse, amen, God, amen, as he's using Peter to write a letter, amen, and as Peter's writing his letter, he's writing this letter to Gentiles or heathens, those that are not worthy, amen, but even though he was writing his letter to those that were not worthy, amen, he called them the elect, the chosen of God, and she's so thankful tonight, amen, that God didn't leave us on a back burner somewhere in the backside of a desert or in a ditch, amen, lost in sin. Uh, amen and could not find our way out but he was willing to look at us uh, in the condition that we was in uh, and say you know what that's somebody I can love uh, that's somebody I can use that's somebody I can call and choose them to be my own uh, amen he said I'm calling them to the elect the chosen according to uh, amen that phrase according to means uh, that he's chosen us for a purpose uh, he's chosen us for a reason that uh, shows a place of responsibility what he's saying is I didn't call you to this uh, to sit back and do nothing I didn't call you to this to stay in your misery in your depression uh, I didn't call you to this to stay bound up in sin uh, and to stay lost and without hope uh, and without the promises of God I've called you with a responsibility you find the children of Israel they were the chosen of God uh, and they dropped the ball when God sent his only son uh, amen and they hung him on a cross but Jesus said in the book of Mark uh, he said because they did this uh, I will send my vineyard to another another nation uh, and another people church that is us uh, amen he said I'll send the blessing of my promise to you uh, according to you uh, amen according with the responsibility to the foreknowledge uh, of God uh, showing in the foreknowledge uh, that this is not about us amen uh, it's not about our agenda no more it's all about the plan of God uh, but it shows not just response Amen. It shows us the place where God loved us so much that He didn't create you in vain. He didn't create you just because. He created you with 
purpose and reason to use you. Uh, amen. Reason to have a relationship with you. Uh, reason to love you. How did he make this possible? Uh, through obedience uh, and the sprinkling of the blood uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, then this is where we turn to verse 3 right here. As he begins to talk uh, and all the things that you can look into that it begins with, uh, this passage in verse 3, uh, it begins by praising God. Uh, when he said, Blessed be the God uh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. First, uh, we have to understand uh, that we're not praying to a distant God. We're not praying to an unknown God, amen. Uh, we're praying to the God who is the God and Father of our Savior that built the bridge uh, and made access that we can come to him uh, and have this relationship uh, with the Father. What a blessing that is, church. Uh, I said, what a blessing that is to know uh, that he can breathe inside of us, uh, amen, and make an access to give us a relationship uh, with the Father, Amen. We're praying to a God who is like Jesus and to who through Christ we can become, amen, like him in a childlike confidence and a childlike boldness. But then he turns to the idea of being born again. Amen. When he said, I have begotten you unto a lively, I have rebirthed this to you. Uh, now I want you to notice what he said, amen, uh, when you read the first two verses and you find him talking to heathens, uh, amen, and he calls us the elect according uh, with a purpose and a plan uh, to the foreknowledge of God because he made us for this, uh, amen, you would expect that he automatically goes to the idea of being born again. Amen. And that common knowledge that we think automatically we hear the language of God speaking to us, calling us out to be his children. Of course, amen. We must be born again, absolutely. But that's not where he started, amen. He started first. This leads us to a place of thanksgiving and being thankful to God. You know, I see so many people come into the house of God over and over and over again. Uh, they call themselves born-again children of God, uh, but yet they're not experiencing the blessings uh, of being born again. They're still bound. Uh, they're still in sin. They're still lost. Uh, I, I, I see uh, a man put something on Facebook the other day. Uh, he said, every time we turn back to sin, uh, we bind the hands of God to deliver us from sin. Come on. Amen. We, we, we proclaim to be born again, but we're still lost and we're still bound. We're still depressed. We're still hurt. You know one of the main reasons that is is because we're not thankful for what God has done for us. Amen. And we may not be where we think we should be, we may not have what we think we should have, but I can tell you what we can be thankful tonight that we're not burning in the devil's hell. Amen. No wonder he started this half life because we're always looking to God on what we can get and what he can give us. But he started off with a responsibility that when we hear the language of God calling us, amen, to be chosen with purpose because he created us. First thing we must realize and do uh, is that we must be thankful uh, that God would even speak uh, in our direction to begin with. Oh. Amen. What a blessing it is to know uh, that when I wake up in the morning, my heart's still beating in my chest uh, and the breath is still breathing in my lungs. Uh, that's something to be thankful for. Amen. And you know what? Uh, if we can learn to praise God, uh, amen, just for the fact that he's God, uh, and just for the fact that he's a father of Jesus Christ that give us access back to God, uh, amen, we'll find more of a life uh, of being a born again child of God. You know what worship is. Worship's like, amen, you ever, you ever worked outside in the hot sun? Amen, and you was thirsty, amen. I, I, I did this growing up. You don't, you don't do this too much anymore, amen. I, amen, but you're thirsty. You turn on the water hose and you pick up and drink from it. Come on, somebody. Amen, you ever been out there? It's been so hot outside. You turn that water hose on and you didn't give it time to run. And you drank from it. It's hot and nasty and stale. Come on. But you knew if you let it run just a little bit shortly, amen, cool, fresh, clean water was fixing to come out. That's what worship is. 
That's what being thankful to God is when we can get to the place and it doesn't matter if I'm in pain or depressed or lost or without. I can just thank him anyways. And eventually my thanksgiving will wash out the trash and open up to a flow that we can experience a life of being born again and a born again child of God. I'm so thankful tonight that we can experience a life of being born again. My Lord, you look at this idea. Amen. When you see this, the idea of being born again. Amen. We have been in the sense reborn by the power of God. We have been begotten again by God to a new and a different kind of life. Whatever else this means, it means this right here. That whenever a person becomes a child of God, it becomes so real and our life becomes so so changed and so radical and so decisive that it can only be said as of being born again. I'm thankful, Brother Dustin, that when he found me, amen, I remember laying in the kitchen floor, amen, depressed and without. I was a snappy-headed, freckle-faced kid, a smaller than everybody else, amen, I had a father that was abusive, didn't love me, amen, I sat there and felt like my life was over and given up. Amen. The devil had me convinced nobody cared and nobody loved me. Amen. I turned to drugs. I was addicted. Amen. To cocaine by the time I was 14 years old. I remember sitting on that floor praying God. Amen. Thinking to myself, it's over. I'm giving up. It's quit. Amen. I'm fixing to take my life and the devil telling me, you're worthless. You're no good. You ain't got what it takes. Taking the knife. Fixing to end it all. But about the time I heard the sweet voice of a Savior whisper in my ear, if you'll give me a chance, if you'll just give me the chance, I'll turn your life around. At 16 years old, I give it all over to him. Amen. And he made such a difference. And you know what? It was as so radical as I was reborn by the power of God. I was no longer addicted. I was no longer depressed. I was no longer without I was reborn uh, by his grace uh, and I am thankful. Uh, I said I'm thankful tonight uh, and I can call myself a child of God. Uh, Man, if you are sitting on this pew, you got something to be thankful for. Amen. If you're sitting on this pew, if you heard them kids sing, you got something to be thankful for. Amen. If you heard that worship choir sing, you got something to be thankful for. If you heard the voice of that pastor open the service, you got something to be thankful for. Amen. We can thank God and bless Him that He is the Father of Jesus Christ that gives us an opening to be reborn by the power of God. Oh, the idea of being born again. Uh, Amen. Runs all through the New Testament. Uh, But let's look at it as just more than a word. Uh, But let's see what it means. Amen. Uh, Let's see what the New Testament says about it. Uh, First, we understand that the Christian or the child of God, uh, their rebirth is by the will uh, and by the act of God. For John chapter 1 and verse 13 shows us that we which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. James 1 and 18 says it like this. Of his own will beget he us. It's not something which we can achieve any more than our natural physical birth. It's something that only happens by the will, by the grace and by the power of God. Everything in us is failure. Paul said, I looked to find some good and couldn't find any good. So if we are born again, it's not because we fixed ourselves. Huh. I wonder how many times I run across somebody. Amen. They say, I want to get in church. I want to do right, but I got some things I got to fix before I get there. I tell them, I say, no, sir. Amen. You can't fix it. Amen. They're still years later and they're still not in church. They're still not getting right. Why? Because they can't do it themselves. Being born again is not an act of the flesh. It's an act by the will, by the grace, and by the power of God. Amen. God is willing to give favor when we don't deserve favor. Amen. I said he's willing to give favor when we 
don't deserve favor. Amen. But it's not something we can do on our own or in ourselves. It's only something that can be done and will be done by the power of God. Oh, come on. Amen. Whenever we are willing to be born again, we can open our, it doesn't matter where we came from. It don't matter what your last name is. It don't matter how bad or how ugly. Amen. Or how much of a failure you was in your past. Amen. God can look down inside of your life and make you a born again. Not because you did anything, but because he loved you so much that he was willing to reach down and pick you up and lift you out and make a difference in your life. Amen. Second, you find being born again. Amen. Another word, way to put this is to say that this rebirth is the work of the Spirit. Just like Christ told Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and verse 5, he said, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I want you to think about the story of Nicodemus right here. I mean, when Jesus told him, amen, that he must be born again, he questioned him on that. How can a man re-enter into his mother's womb? Amen. And his question was this. Hey, after he had told them, look, you're talking about, flat, I'm talking about spiritual. Uh, but then he looked at him and he said, ain't you a master in Israel? Uh, he, was, he was a Pharisee. Amen. He was under the doctrine of the law. Amen. And at that time, he knew what the word born again was. He's acting like he doesn't understand what he's talking about. But they recognized that. Well, Jesus never spoke out of context. He always spoke in a manner and a language. Everyone knew what they understood. So Nicodemus knew what he was talking about. Because when a proselyte come from another faith into the Jewish religion, amen, they were called being born again. It wasn't the problem that he didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. He just didn't think it was possible. Because he's seen people try to fulfill and obey the law according to their own flesh and could not do it. So when he was questioning Jesus, he was saying, uh, amen, it's not that I don't desire this. He says, I don't think it can happen. Uh, but what Jesus was saying, you're right. In your flesh, it can not happen. Uh, there's no way you can re-enter your mother's womb. Uh, but in the spirit, uh, amen, God can reach down uh, and change your life uh, and rebirth your life uh, into something that is not you. My God, somebody. I said into something that is not you. Uh, into something that is even more Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. I thought to myself, when God called me to preach this gospel, I said, Lord, there ain't no way I'm going to preach this gospel. Amen. I can't even focus enough. Amen. To read a chapter in the Bible. My attention span is shot. But let me tell you something. When the Spirit enters in, amen, I read no less than six chapters a day. I devour no, through no less than four books at a time every single day of my life. And I only have to stop because I run out of time. Why? It's because what my mind and the flesh could not do, my mind and the spirit can do. That when it's impossible inside of my life, it is possible inside of his plan, inside of his life. This is a rebirth, not to stay in the flesh, not to stay in my weakness, but it's a rebirth in the spirit of God. Oh, it happens. It happens to a person, not by our own effort, but whenever we yield ourselves to be possessed and occupied and recreated by the Spirit within us. Oh, I'm glad, Brother Thomas. Amen. That God didn't leave me in that same mess that He found me in. I'm glad that God didn't leave me in that same weakness and the same fear. And the same doubt that he found me in. I'm glad he didn't look down and say, you know what? Hey, you ain't got what it takes. Amen. But he was willing to rebirth me into the power. 
power of his own will. Amen. Third, you turn to it. He said that this happens to be reborn. Amen. First, you know, amen, that it is by the will, the power, and the grace of God. Second, it is by the Spirit. But then third, this happens by the word of truth. James chapter 1 and 18 continues. He said, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the words of God which liveth and abides forever you find that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God it was in the word that God created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them that God can look in the chaos of this world and the voids of the nothing and begin to bring my Lord I get so excited when I read Genesis chapter 1 and I think about that breath moving uh, as a spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, amen. And that breath could articulate uh, into words. Uh, and God can begin to speak uh, and say, let there be light. Uh, and in darkness and chaos, uh, God can make light. Uh, and God can create. Uh, and God can shape. And God can make. Uh, that's the same power that is speaking to us today. Uh, when he says, elect chosen of God. Whatever he says, you're called to a purpose. Amen. You were created for this. He's saying, my word has power of life over death, of light and darkness to bring you up and give you strength and weakness. Oh, amen. If we're not listening to the voice of God, you know the beauty about prayer is, amen. I'm going to have y'all sick and tired of hearing about my wife before this week's over with. I love my wife. <laughs> She's my baby girl. That's, my, that's her nickname. I went to a youth camp, preached at a youth camp back in uh, June in Alabama, and I was calling her a baby girl, and every time I'd say baby girl, them little girls would go, Ooh. <laughs> hey, I've called her baby girl as long as I can remember. My church calls her baby girl sometimes. Uh, hey, man, I miss baby girl. Hey, man, it ain't but two days I've been away from her. Hey, man, but you know, when I first met her, I met her in youth camp. Uh, I was shy. She was shy. Hey, Amen. we didn't hardly talk to each other, didn't hardly know each other. Hey, Amen. I remember I asked her sister to ask her out for me, and she said, you go tell him if he wants me to be his girlfriend, he better come to me and ask me to be his girlfriend. I was determined. Hey, Amen. Uh, let's get out of that mold here. I went up to her. I said, Dana, would you be my girlfriend? Yeah. Hey, Amen. Uh, here it is. We started dating. I think the first time we was about 12, 13 years old. Hey, Amen. Now, I'm 36. She's fixing to be 35 this month, November the 30th. I'm right. Uh, hey, Amen. I'm not in trouble. Uh, hey, Amen. Uh, hey, Amen. Uh, been married going on 18 years this February. Hey, Amen. But you know what? Uh, the life that we live together is beautiful. Beautiful, and it's close. Amen. It's intimate. She's my absolute best friend. I know what she's feeling. I know what she's thinking. And I mean that well. I know what she's thinking. I look at the boys sometimes, brother. She's going to whoop me. Amen. I look at the boys sometimes. Amen. And I say, hey, boys, it's that time. Just go to your room. <laughs> Boys, leave your mom alone. <laughs> Amen. I can sit on her. I read her well. <laughs> but you know how we got to that place? <laughs> Amen. It's because we communicated with each other. Amen. If I never would have called her, I never would have asked her out with my own words. <laughs> Amen. I would have never heard her voice respond and say, yes, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Over time, amen, uh, the more I talk to her, the more I begin to recognize her. Uh, and there was a time I could have went to an amusement park uh, and a crowd of people lost her. Uh, and she could have called my name. I wouldn't have known who she was. Uh, but let me tell you something. 20 years later, uh, amen, almost 18 years of marriage, uh, all she's got to do is whisper my name in a crowd. Uh, and I know exactly where baby girl is. Uh, that's the same thing with the father. That's the purpose of prayer. Amen. That's the beauty of prayer that when we come to him uh, and the more we communicate with him uh, with the more we begin to recognize his voice uh, amen the words that are life those words uh, that are power as I wonder how many times he speaks to us uh, and he speaks life and power and we don't recognize his voice uh, because we don't know uh, 
and we can't receive and we cannot accept life and that grace and authority because we don't recognize but if we can get to a place amen as we have a responsibility as born again child of God if we can get to that place of thanksgiving and blessing him and be thankful that he is God and as he begins to speak in relationship and commune back we can begin to hear and we can begin to notice the voice that he speaks to us with hell amen forth the result of this rebirth amen is that one a man that is born again they become the first fruits of a new creation James 1 and 18 finishes it off like this amen he says of his own will beget he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures amen this rebirth it lifts a person out of space out of time out of a world of change and challenge and decay out of this world of sin and defeat and brings us here amen and now into a living touch with the father like never before I used to work I used to be a welder for a steel production plant when I remember when I first started working there and I you know I worked at Walmart distribution center for six years and I got to a place I couldn't afford to work there no more. I needed a better job. And God opened the door for me to work at the steel plant. And I got a job and I was praying, Brother Thomas. I said, Lord, how come I didn't win? I, I tried them six years. I couldn't win nobody. I crammed it down their throat. I got to a place when they came to me, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. They turned around and go the other way because I tried to give it to them so hard. And I began to pray, God, what, what must I do to win this plant? You know what his response to me was? Just shut your mouth. Let him see me inside of you. I remember going to this place, and it wasn't long. They began to notice something was different about me. I, not, not, not by what I told them, but by the Jesus that was living. By, because I was born again. I, had be, I was a first fruit of his creation. Uh, I was a first fruit of his creatures. Uh, and they began to see something different to the point. Uh, amen. I remember old Tyler the first time he come up behind me. Amen. He said, yeah, my real name is Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, can I talk to you after work? I said, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, you can talk to me after work. Uh, amen. He came to me after work. He said, what do you have that I don't have? I said, I'm saved. Tyler said, no. I'm saved too. I've been raised in church my whole life. I go to the First Baptist Church down the road. What do you have uh, that I don't have? I said, well, Tyler, I'm sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. I said, oh, so you're one of them tongue, talk, tongue talkers. I said, well, I guess you, if you want to call us that, yeah, amen. I speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. He said, I was always taught that was of the devil. I said, well, let's go to Waffle House, amen. After work, we worked the second shift. Amen. Let's talk for a while. Two weeks, we met up and talked. Uh, amen. Talked for a while. Hey, I could not get him to understand uh, at all. Finally, I said, Tyler, why don't you just come to church with me Sunday morning? Uh, I said, I first of fear struck his face. Amen. He's thinking snake handlers. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hey, he, he's, he's afraid about what he may experience. I said, look, I'm not asking you to convert. I'm not asking you to change. I'm not asking for a difference. I'm just asking you to come visit me at church. Amen. And Tyler came. And as Tyler came, Tyler came and sat by me on that pew. Amen. That choir began to sing. And I remember, amen, feeling the spirit move. I said, oh, it's one of them. Amen. I can feel it breathe and in the service. We're fixing that church in front of this Baptist boy that don't even believe in Pentecost. Amen. About that time, Sister Robin stood up on the front row. Her head fell back. That long hair began to sway. She began to speak in tongues. I'm just praying, God, prove yourself to Tyler this morning. I can tell in my peripheral vision, Tyler's watching her. Amen. With every word she would say in every step, I finally looked at him. I said, Tyler, you all right? He said, Jerry, I'm right here with you. I've never felt anything like this in my life. That next Sunday, Tyler brought his girlfriend, and they both got saved and give the hearts to the Lord. Today, Tyler and his girlfriend are married. Both of them are saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost and got five kids, and Tyler is now preaching the gospel. I remember I went to the church he attends in Lake City. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I remember preaching at the church he attends in Lake City, Florida, where he lives. As I was preaching a youth conference there, amen, just about nine months ago, an old boy that was taught that tongues was of the devil and didn't believe in Pentecost. I love when I was preaching, I could tell he was sitting in another world. By the time the tongue began to flow and he'd give a message in tongues, sound like a freight train come through the middle of that church. I thought to myself, oh my God, amen, that boy that you used not to believe, now believes. Well, boy, it used to limit you and only take a piece of you. Now he's a basket in the full presence of God. Why? Why? It's because we are the first fruits of the Zion. Amen. We are the first fruits as we are born again children of God. This world is meant to see you and is meant to look at you and to know that something is different. That is the responsibility of being born again. Uh, 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 let me tell you something though amen uh, uh, it didn't come that easy Amen. When they found out I was a Christian uh, I remember them telling me uh, there ain't no way you can be saved working here Amen. My supervisor, Lorenzo, uh, amen, he told me, he said, there ain't no way a Christian can work on my line. Uh, he said, I'm going to do everything I can to break you. Uh, he said, uh, He said, before this month's over with, uh, I'll have you cussing and drinking with the rest of us. Uh, I said, you don't know the God I serve. Uh, amen. He, uh, he cussed me out. Uh, he talked to me dirt. I remember one day he pinned me in the locker room of work. Uh, at work, amen. Uh, amen. Trying to curse me. Listen, uh, just because you're born again don't mean it's going to be easy church amen it don't mean it's just going to come easy amen it just means that you are different and they're going to reckon they're either going to accept it or they're going to try their best to fight it and the more Lorenzo fought conviction amen the more Lorenzo come against conviction the more miserable he got and the more he attacked me I remember one day he come in that locker room I'm just I'm, I'm getting all off my message a little bit I remember one day he come in that locker room and he looked at me I was changing my boots something got on my nerves that day amen and he knew I was upset in front of all my peers. He said, Jeremiah, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. He said, you want to curse, don't you? I said, no, sir. He said, yes, you do. I can see it all over your face. Curse, Jeremiah. I said, I'm not cursing. He said, I'll say it for you. As he cursed me out for several minutes, amen, would not let up on me. Amen, this big old fella, about six foot four, 230 pounds, used to be a college linebacker, cursing me up and down. Curse, Jeremiah. I just took my boots off, put my tennis shoes on. I walked out the door, but it wasn't long after that. His daddy got cancer, and you know who Lorenzo was calling? That same one, he said, it break. I need you to pray. Hey, my daddy's sick. I need you to pray. Listen, I, you are a first fruits of, your, of, of God's creation and of the creatures that are out there. If you are a born again child of God, he may come against you, but there is no telling the light that he is intends for you to be uh, oh why because when you are born again uh, amen fifth uh, whenever we are reborn we became uh, we become uh, a living hope first peter one and three says it like this he said according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul describes the heathen world as being without hope in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12. He says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise with no hope and without God in the world. To this heathen world, amen, it was a world a world where all things faded, uh, a world where everything was decayed, uh, a world in which uh, there was nothing pleasant in itself, uh, but which was going out into nothing uh, but endless darkness. Uh, but to the born again child of God, uh, hope came from two things. You ready? Uh, amen. And it was in that uh, they felt hope uh, that they had been born, uh, not of that which was corruptible, uh, but that which was non-corruptible, uh, incorruptible. Corruptible, uh, an incorruptible seed. Uh, they had something of the very seed of God in them. Uh, amen. And they had a life uh, at time and eternity could not, uh, would not, uh, and cannot destroy. Just in church, uh, when I'm born again, when you're born again, uh, you have a promise that is eternal. What is that promise? Uh, amen. That one day uh, we're going to see him 
come face to face. Amen. Would never shed a tear again. Would never hunger and would never thirst. That is a living hope. Amen. I said that is a living hope. Amen. To find the plan and the promises of God. You take hope away from a drug addict, they'll kill themselves. Amen. You take hope away from a drunk, amen. They'll drink themselves to death.